Hey guys, I'm here in the garage with my 2012 Scion IQ, which needed to have its transmission fluid changed. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I'm reshooting this introduction because I did the procedure wrong and I wanted to call it out as soon as possible in the video that I did this wrong and if you came here looking for instructions, what you're going to see me do here is not the way that you should do it, assuming all you need to do is change the fluid. Uh, so the symptoms that we saw before I did the procedure were that as the weather got hot, as the transmission would warm up when, while driving the car, you'd start to hear this whining noise when you get on the throttle. And I suspected that that was a result of the transmission fluid breaking down and no longer being as good of a lubricant and the parts starting to touch each other. It sounds a little bit like gear one. So I decided that the fluid needed to be changed. Now, in the owner's manual, there's no change interval for the transmission fluid specified. And in the service manual, there's no change interval specified, nor is there a procedure for changing it. So I had to use past experience as a guide to figure out how to do this. And the way that I chose to do it is basically like you would do to change the transmission fluid in any other automatic transmission. And that is to remove the pan from the bottom of the transmission. Now, in this case, that's not how you should go about this, unless you have a leak at the pan gasket, in which case, obviously, you're going to have to remove the pan in order to replace the gasket. But in my case, all I needed to do was to change the fluid. So while I did remove the pan, you should know that there's an easier way to do it, which I'll talk about later. But the short version is you would remove the drain plug like I do here, and then you would remove the little plastic measuring tube that sticks up inside the pan. And when you do that, all of the fluid's going to drain out in an orderly fashion, as opposed to the torrent of red hate fullness that comes out that you'll, you'll see here. Before we get into it, I wanted to make clear that the way I show this here is not the way that you should do it if all you need to do is change the fluid. So if you came here for entertainment, hoping to watch a person roll around in his garage in a puddle of oil, uh, I hope you're entertained. And if you came here looking for instructions on how to do this yourself, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, and without further delay, let's get on with it. Before we can get started taking things apart, we need to raise the vehicle and place it safely on jack stands. Now, according to the uh, owner's manual, there's a spot right here in the center that you're supposed to use to put a floor jack under, and in the rear, you use the two toe hooks that stick out that are pretty obvious. I'm ashamed to admit that I went years without knowing that. In fact, I, I'm ashamed to admit I went years without figuring out that there's a little cubby under the passenger seat where the owner's manual is, and for the longest time I thought I didn't have an owner's manual. Uh, but if you have one of these cars and you haven't found the owner's manual, look in that little drawer thing under the passenger seat, and that's probably where it is. Anyway, uh, let me see if I can get you an angle so you can see where I'm sticking the jack, and we'll go ahead and get the front end jacked up. If you look right above the block of wood there, you'll see the little nipple thing in the subframe sticking out, and that's where the jack goes. That metal subframe is a pretty stout piece of steel, so that's a safe thing to jack from. When we get the car lifted up, We'll position our jack stands under the sides of the subframe, as you can see right here, and the, uh, the corresponding structure on the other side. We're, uh, we're now at the back of the car, and uh, you may be wondering, Aaron, why are you going to jack up the back of the car if all you got to do is service some stuff up at the front? And the answer is, in order to get the transmission refilled properly, the car needs to be level so that the fill and drain holes are in their proper alignment with the level of the fluid. So I need to raise the back as well and make sure that the car is pretty close to level. Before we can get the wheel off, we need to remove this plastic cover. Some cars come with a tool for this, but the iQ, because it doesn't have a spare, I don't think does. Uh, so what I'm going to use to do it is this motorcycle tire iron. Now, this is really intended to be used for prying motorcycle tires onto the rim, but it works really great for removing these plastic covers. Now that we've got the wheel off, we can take a look at the inside of the wheel well here and see what we're dealing with. This here is the fill port bolt for the transmission fluid. So when we get the new transmission fluid, it needs to go in through this hole. And there we go. One good little nudge on the end of the brick. Oh, wouldn't you know it, I managed to jack the car up and put the jack stand in exactly the right spot to be in the way. 
The drain plug for the transmission pan is right here. And you may not be able to see it in the frame there, but that is directly above the base of this jack stand. So I need to move that. Where I'm gonna move it to is up here so I can get a drain pan into this area. We've got quite a bit more space, so what I'm gonna do is position this very large drain pan as close to under the drain bolt as I can get it. Okay, well the drain pan's here in position and the car lifted and supported on the jack stands. We can now remove our drain plug which is right here at the front edge of the pan and drain out some of the fluid from the transmission. Now, according to the shop manual, there should be about 1.6 liters of fluid inside here. We're not gonna be able to get all of it out because some of it is inside of the torque converter and up inside the transmission here and it just doesn't come out when you drain it. However, the way that you get the fluid out is not to remove this drain plug, but to remove the entire pan. Uh, anybody who's familiar with doing automatic transmission services on other cars will probably be familiar with that, where in some cases they don't even have a drain. So what we gotta do first is we're gonna remove this and get as much of the fluid out of there as we can, uh, because obviously this is a big surface and it's got 15 bolts that hold it in, and as we remove those, the fluid's gonna start coming out, and it makes a, a huge mess. You take a bath in the, the transmission fluid. So the more of it we can get out of there first, the better. So first step is to remove this plug. And it's a six millimeter hex bit that's required for this. There we go. Now, according to the shop manual, this drain plug is kind of a funky design where inside there, there is a little plastic tube. And the plastic tube is used to help measure the amount of fluid inside the transmission. So we're gonna let that go ahead and drain. There's no signs of leakage on this transmission which is a good sign. So we're gonna let it go ahead and continue draining until none comes out. And the next part of the process is to remove the pan itself. For that, we need, I'll wager, a 10 millimeter. Yep, 10 millimeter. So that's slowed to a drip. So I'm gonna put this guy back in there, out of the way, not tightening it down or anything. Unfortunately, there's no real, go really good way of doing this without it making a mess. However, luckily, these bolts are basically never tight, and I need an extension. Back into the car. According to the shop manual, there should be a total of 15 bolts that hold this on here. And with any luck, we don't have to remove that engine mount. It's one about right here. You can see the little recess there for it. And you just go around here, make sure you get them all loose. Did I miss one? Maybe I missed one? And there's one right here. I need like a swivel socket or something for. And in fact, I should maybe just remove this guy. I think that's what we're doing. With that wind deflector out of the way, we've got quite a bit more room to work here. So now we can loosen that one. And now what you do is you go around the pan and finish removing all of the bolts. What I'm going to do is remove them from this side first leave a few of them in over here so I can tip the pan this way and hopefully be able to get it out of there without spilling all the fluid all over myself and the camera. They talk about these GoPros being waterproof. They never talk about whether or not they're oilproof. I wonder if anybody's ever filed a warranty claim because one of them got dunked in transmission fluid and quit working. I wonder what GoPro would have to say about it. As you can see, now that I've removed enough of the bolts, fluid finds its way out of there. So we'll go ahead and let that drain until it stops before we continue to remove the bolts 
So now the fluid that remains in there should just be the fluid that is actually inside of the pan. As you can see, this makes a huge mess. And the pan seems to be stuck in there. And there we go. I'm gonna put as much as a, of the drained fluid as I can inside this empty jug. Uh, one, I wanna know about how much came out uh, to make sure that I have enough to refill it. And also, I wanna get as much of this mess cleaned up as I can so that I don't have to lie on my back in a puddle of oil to work on it. As you can see here, we've got our old transmission fluid safely ensconced in this oil jug. And we've got marks along here. On this side, we've got quartz. On this side, we've got liters. And that's the four liter mark right there. This is a five liter jug, or five quart jug. So we're just shy of the four liter mark, maybe three and 60%. That's good because the replacement fluid is sold in jugs of four liters. So one jug should be enough to replace all of the fluid that we drained out. Now, according to the owner's manual, the total volume of fluid in there is 5.6 liters. So it looks like we, we can only get about 60% of it out. But replacing 60% is better than replacing 0%. So I'm gonna call this a win. Um, we've also got the pan here and we need to remove the old pan gasket. We'll need to clean the mating surface before we reinstall the pan. Uh, before we do that though, I want to clean the inside of the pan out to get any junk out of there that may have gotten in while it was under the car, or if there's any loose metal shavings. Uh, also, the pan has these magnets that you can see the other one right here. Stick to the pan uh, and collect any loose metal that gets loose inside the transmission so it doesn't contaminate the rest of the transmission. So while we've got this out, we're gonna clean those as well. I should also note that to my surprise, there is in fact a filter in there. Uh, according to the shop manual, there's no procedure for replacing the filter, uh, which is strange, but there you have it nonetheless. Okay, so we clean this surface off and we wanna get as much of the transmission fluid out as we can so that dirt doesn't stick to it. We may also actually wash the underside of this so that it's nice and clean when it goes back on. Before I can get the plastic tube out, remember I had put this drain plug back in, so I gotta remove that, and then I'll just twist this out. You tighten it from the inside, and that, that's as if you're loosening it from the outside, and then it comes right out. We don't wanna lose this, this is really important. So we set that aside. What you see here is the inside of the transmission where the pan would go at the bottom. And this component here is a filter. Now, interestingly, the factory service manual makes no mention at all of a replacement filter that's available or any procedure for replacing it. And as a result, I do not have a replacement one. So I am going to operate under the assumption that Toyota does not mean for you to replace this and not replace this. I'm going to change only the fluid. While the pan dries from being cleaned, uh, we need to clean off any dirt that may have gotten onto the gasket mating surface there. Uh, I'm gonna do that with just a paper towel. And then we need to get our new gasket ready to go so that we can reinstall the pan. It does not appear that a whole lot of dirt made it in there. So we're just gonna wipe the surface clean here. There we go, that's probably clean enough. Okay. We've got our cleaned pan here, and before you put it back together, you wanna to make sure that you take these two little magnets and you put them back inside there like that. And there we go. We're dry on the inside. We're ready to put this back in the car. But first, we need everybody's favorite thing that we have to thank for our amazing first world lifestyles. You know what that is? Go on, guess. If you guessed a gasket, you would be right. Here we've got our new gasket, and it's sort of a cork and rubber hybrid. We'll take it out of here and see that, and see that it matches the shape of the pen. Now, we gotta get this back in there, mostly aligned. We'll use the bolts 
to fully align it once we get it in there. What we need is our pan with its fresh gasket and a couple of the pan bolts. We kind of need to fish it in here. Oh, don't want that getting out of whack. If you have to, you can do some shenanigans like putting a dab of RTV on it maybe to hold the gasket in place. It would help if I had this the right way around. Okay, don't be an idiot like me kids and try to put this in backwards. The drain hole over here goes at the front. So we fish them in like so. And then we kind of realign our gasket here. Put it up into place. If you can manage to do this without getting transmission fluid in your hair, you are either bald, balder than me anyway, or a more dexterous man than I. Because I can't remember ever having succeeded in doing a transmission fluid change and not getting transmission fluid in my hair. All right, there's one of our bolts aligned. That'll stay up there like that. Now we can go to somewhere. Hang on a second. Okay, I just wanted to check that the manual does not call for you to coat the new gasket in the transmission fluid before installing it. That's a pretty common thing in a lot of these, and you just want to make sure that you don't need to do that. All right, so that one's a little, there we go. Okay. So once you get a couple of the bolts in, the gasket should stay pretty well aligned so that you can get a couple more to hold it in place. There we go, there's a third. And maybe do one over here. That's a fourth. Now you just put the bolts back in. You don't want to tighten any of them down until you got them all started. But at this point, it's just a matter of sticking them back in. With the understanding that some of them go in kind of tight spaces may be difficult. Okay, so there's one there. We got three here missing, one right there. So there we go. Uh, Okay, there they all are, finger tight. Now, we do the torque procedure, and I believe the torque spec is something like 62 inch-pounds, five-ish foot right, There we go, there's one. With our pan reinstalled, we're now ready to do the fill procedure. And the first step in the process is to reinstall this little guy. Basically, the way that this works is this sticks up inside the pan, and as the fluid level in the pan rises, eventually it gets to the top of this, and it overflows internally inside the pan, down through this tube, and out the bottom of the transmission. And that's stage one of filling the transmission up. So the torque spec on this is seven inch pounds, which is so small that we uh, any of the torque wrenches I have wouldn't be able to measure it. But what it seems to be is that just means that it needs to be all the way in and bottomed out in the hole. This is not a totally blind hole. It looks like there's a little ridge in there that this rests on. So we need to get this in there and bottomed out in the hole. And as you can see, it fits on our six millimeter hex bit. So we go ahead and stick him up in there like this. Turn it in as tight as I can get that with my hands. It's tight enough for that purpose. All right, here we are beside the car, and we've got our fresh fluid here. The type that you need for this application is Toyota CBTF-TC. Uh, it comes in this large can thing, four liters to a can. And if the amount that we got out of the transmission is indicative of how much we're gonna need to put in, then this is gonna be just the right amount. We're gonna have about half a liter left over. So in order to get this into there, you'll notice, or you may remember, that that fill hole is on the side of the transmission. So you can't just stick a funnel in there and dump the fluid in and call it a day. No, 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 they, they had to make it more difficult than that. Now, the service manual calls for a special tool that has sort of an elbow-shaped 
metal pipe that sticks in there and you can pump it from below. Uh, I have the civilian version of that, uh, which exists more or less just for that task. So it's going to be difficult to get a whole gallon in there. I'm going to be pumping a while. But I've done this before on a, on a car that used way more transmission fluid than this, and it worked pretty good. I get the distinct impression that this can may be intended to be used with a special tool that I don't happen to have. So I'm going to have to see if there's another way that I can pry this cap off of here. And it's held on by these little tabs. Looks like there's maybe three. And I'm just going to use a seal pick. There we go. Beautiful. All right, so it has that weird cap that you got to get off. So the way you do this, you stick one end of the fill pump into the can, and the other inside there. And you just start pumping. And we're going to do this probably until my hand falls off. So, after an apparent eternity of pumping, I've got the transmission filled up enough that you've got fluid draining out from that little overflow tube. The manual says to wait until that stops, and it basically becomes just a trickle any, any second now. There we go. And then to put the cap in. So we put that guy into our fill port, or our uh, drain hole here. Come on, go on in there. There we go. Okay. And now we need to measure 1.5 liters to finish filling this up. I've got right here a measuring cup that goes up to one liter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a liter in here. Um, and then according to the service manual after that, we need another 600 milliliters to finish filling that up. Well, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a problem. It seems that somehow I've managed to not order enough fluid to fill the transmission all the way up. Luckily, I think you can get compatible fluid from Amazon. So hopefully I'll be able to order some of that tonight and get it tomorrow and we can finish this up tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. Okay, so this is, and we need to remember this, 670 milliliters. Uh, luckily, AutoZone is open till 10 where I live, and they carry this, uh, which, according to the bottle, meets the spec for Toyota CVTF TC. I got two quarts, which should be plenty to finish this off. So we, we needed about one more liter. We've got two just in case. I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting the uh, 670 mils of the original fluid into the transmission, and then I'll put 930 milliliters of this, which should be about one quart. Wonder if this is gonna be red. Oh, look at that. As far as I can tell, it mixes with the residue from the first batch. No problem at all. So I'm reasonably confident that this is the same stuff. I wonder if Castrol even makes it themselves. One more round of pumping. All right, well that's all the way up to the fill hole. I certainly hope that that is enough. Okay, well, as you probably guessed, I'm a dingus. I read the wrong line in the manual because I'm a dingus, and I put too much fluid in there. Luckily, this has a drain port. So what we're gonna do is we're going to drain a little bit out. Instead of putting 400 milliliters in like I was supposed to, I put about 1,500. So we're gonna drain about a liter out, and then we're gonna do the procedure to check the level, and part of the process in that procedure is remove the drain plug with the engine run, and if the level has been set correctly, a little bit will flow out of the, the drain port. So what I'm going to do now is put fill plug back on. Uh, I'm going to remove the drain plug and drain out about a liter, and then I'm going to put the drain plug back in, and then do the check procedure. Goes back in there. Yep. 400, 500, we spilled a little bit in the pan, so we're going to say that's about 50 mils in the pan, so what we want is 950. There's 700, 800, 900, and we'll say that's about right. Remember how I said it's almost impossible to do this without making a mess? I wasn't kidding. Okay, I fixed my mistakes, and I think I have the transmission filled up properly. So, the last step in the process that I need to do is to check to make sure that I filled up the transmission to the proper level. 
Uh, in order, order to do that, there, it's a sort of a two-part process. One is removing the fill plug and watching for the fluid to trickle out. And the other is making sure that the transmission fluid is the right temperature when you remove the plug so that it will have expanded just the right amount and be at the right level inside the transmission while the engine is running. Now, the service manual talks about two different ways of doing this. One is to monitor the transmission temperature using their special computerized service tool that costs thousands of dollars, and I don't have one. And if you're watching this video, chances are you don't have one either. The second way of doing this is to bridge two of the wires in the OBD2 connector and then do a song and dance with the shift lever to put the transmission into test mode, and it will blink the, the transmission gear indicator light, the one that says D or R or N, uh, when the transmission fluid is at the right temperature. Uh, but what I'm going to show you is the way I did this, and that's a third way. Now, the OBD2 spec does not include the transmission fluid temperature as part of the standard. So every manufacturer has their own set of parameters that they use to monitor the transmission fluid temperature through the OBD2 connector. And I had to do some research to figure out how to monitor a Toyota tra uh, automatic transmission fluid temperature sensor, which it, the car does have. And what I found were some instructions for doing this on a forerunner. So I plugged them into my OBD2 scanner system here, which consists of a Bluetooth OBD2 dongle and an Android tablet running the Torque app. And I was able to get a pretty sane looking readout on the, the display that I think is correct. So what I'm doing is I'm using what I believe to be the Toyota PID for the automatic transmission fluid temperature sensor and an elaborate equation I found on the internet to convert that from the raw data that comes out of the transmission computer into a Fahrenheit value that I can read on the screen here and uh, be able to monitor the temperature. So let me show you how I did that now. First, we need to plug in our OBD2 dongle into the car's connector. On the IQ, that's down here below the steering wheel near the uh, hood release. So we plug this guy in here and we're all set. Next, we need to turn on the ignition and we wake up our Android tablet, unlock and start the Torque app. And the first time we do this, we're going to need to add the PID for the Toyota automatic transmission temperature sensor. And the way we do that is we hit the little gear icon down here and we go to settings and we go to manage extra PIDs or sensors. Uh, you'd normally go up here and do add custom PID, uh, but I've already got this one added. So I'm going to go in and edit this one. And up here, you give it the name of the PID you want to add. And in that case, this is 2182. You set a minimum and a maximum value. And then you get to the important part down here. And you enter this whole long equation. Here, let me zoom that in. I'll also add this in the description so you can copy and paste it if you need to. I'd love to take credit for coming up with this, but it was a fellow on, a, I think it was like a forerunner forum, who had originally figured this out. So all credit to him. I'll see if I can find a link to his post in the description so you can go and read for yourself about it. But this equation here translates the raw values that come out of the OBD2 port into an intelligible value that we can use to monitor the transmission temperature sensor. So we're going to quit out of this, go back to here, and we'll go to real-time information, and it goes to our gauge display. And as you can see right here, right in the center, that's the short name that I, I gave the custom PID, T-O-Y-T-T, and that is used to monitor our transmission temperature. Now, the car has recently been driven, so the temperature is way above where we would want it to be to measure the uh, transmission temperature for the check procedure. But presuming that you're starting with a cold transmission, this is going to be whatever the ambient temperature is. And today, it's about 100 degrees, so I wouldn't even necessarily have to run the engine to heat it up. But there you go. All right, so we're going to start the engine. Transmission in park. And now we keep an eye on our gauge. Gauge there. One thing it's also generally standard practice to do when you do the, an operation like this is once you've started the engine, 
you want to shift the transmission into all of the different gear options. So there's reverse, there's neutral, there's drive, and here's whatever B is. And you can hear that the engine RPM changes when we do that. So there's drive again, there's neutral, there's reverse, there's B. All right, and our transmission temperature is oops, coming up, 97.8 now. A little further to go, 98.9. So we're going to move the drain plug and look for our pickle, our fluid. And if that's what we see, then we're all done. We can tighten up the fill port and the drain plug for good. And that right there, I think, is exactly what we want to see. So we'll go ahead and put our plug back in. And I think we're good to go. Before we put the wheel back on and our little windshield thingy, we need to torque our fill port, or our, sorry, our drain port to 30 foot-pounds and the fill port to 36. So we'll go ahead and use the torque wrench here. And there we go, 30 right there. And now we do 36 foot-pounds for our fill port. You ever look at a piece like this and think, oh, that'll be easy to get on there? And then you can't figure out which way it goes. Because I just did. There we go. It goes like this. All right, well, there we go. Now that we've got our little wind deflector gizmo on there, we're ready to put our wheel on and torque it down and then take the car for a drive. So there we go. Off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what the torque spec is for these. I think it's 76 foot-pounds, so I like to do 80 and call that good enough. So that's what I'm going to do now. I almost forgot. In order to properly torque the lug nuts on, on these wheels, the best way to do that is to put the car on the ground first so that the parking brake can help us hold the wheel still. Otherwise, we have to hold the wheel still in order to do that. All right, 80 foot-pounds. There we go. That is the last fastener. Maybe we should take her for a ride now. All right, into reverse. And we're off. All right, so we're cruising along here at 30 miles an hour, coming up to a stop sign. And the transmission noise is totally gone. Um, engine says it's now up to temperature. But the car moves under its own power, and the transmission whining is gone, so I, I think that may be a victory. All right, we're turning onto a road that has a speed limit of 55 miles an hour. So we really give the, the engine the beans here. It's 45, 50, 55, back out, and there we are. Cruising along at 55 miles an hour. The car seems totally normal. I call that a win. Let's go home and wrap this up. All right, and there you have it. Uh, as we saw in the test drive, the car runs and drives just fine, and the whining noise is gone. So, uh, in the future, I think the change interval should probably be 30 or 40,000 miles. Uh, and remember, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, what you saw me do here was basically the hardest possible way you could do this. And if you came to this video looking for instructions, you should not do it the way I did here, and instead just remove the plug in that tube and let the fluid drain out. So, if you came looking for instructions, I hope it was helpful. And if you came looking for entertainment, I hope it entertained you. And I will see you in the next one.